Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can properly bypass a certain Angular HTTP interceptor for a particular HTTP request. You might want to do that for the scenarios like the following one. Imagine we've got a global HTTP error interceptor with a goal of catching all failed requests in our application, retrying them multiple times, and if it still fails, displaying a snack bar with the error message. This behavior might work in 99% of cases, but as always, there might be one or few requests that do not quite fit this error handling pattern. For example, I have a user list component where I can unenroll a user from their online course by clicking a corresponding button. This particular HTTP call has its own error handling logic that boils down to catching the error inside the stream and simply showing the message in the component template. This, however, overlaps the global HTTP error handling strategy, and if we simulate HTTP error for this particular request, we will get a snack bar message below and the error message in the component template at the same time, which might be pretty messy and confusing for your users. Watch this video until the end and you will learn what is HTTP context and how it can help us to handle use cases like this one. My name is Dmitro Mrzenski and I create advanced Angular tutorials and courses helping you to level up your Angular skills. And today I will be happy to show you HTTP context feature in action. Let's get started. As I already mentioned, the key to our solution is HTTP context. But what is the HTTP context? This is something like an object where you can put any data and this object, this data, exists during the lifetime of a certain HTTP request. This means that every interceptor can access this context and adjust its logic depending on the values we put into it. So as you can see, the concept of HTTP context is pretty simple. Now let's see how it looks in practice. To provide context for a certain HTTP call, you have to use the configuration object that is available for any type of request, either it is GET or PUT or POST, etc. And here simply define key context and the value for this key should be an instance of the HTTP context class that you need to obviously import. This context instance exposes an API that allows you to manipulate its state. For example, you can set a new value for it. This set method expects that you will provide a so-called HTTP context token that will be used as a key to access it later. And obviously, it requires a value that will be associated with this token. So let's go and create a dedicated context token. I prefer keeping them in separate files, so that's why I'm going to create a new file next to already existing global HTTP error interceptor, and we can give it any name, whatever makes sense to you. So from here, we're going to export a new constant, which I name skip error snack bar and the value of this constant will be a new instance of the HTTP context token class. And in the constructor here, I must provide a function that will return the initial value for this token. Great. Now our token is ready to be used, so I can grab it and go back to my users list component and configure the HTTP context with this newly created token. And here I can set value for this token to true, meaning that I want to skip the error snack bar appearance for this particular HTTP request if it fails. Now to complete my solution, I have to adjust the global HTTP error interceptor and adjust its logic to take into account the value we provide via HTTP context. So first, 
I need to get a reference to a particular token in my context, which we can easily do by accessing their context property of the incoming request and simply using their get method with their HTTP context token value of which one I want to get. And then having the value for this context token, I can do whatever I want with it. For example, I can add an additional if statement to show the snack burn message only if it shouldn't be skipped, which is, in my case, the default behavior. And by the way, in this case, we only skip the notification appearance, but the retry mechanism remains working. If you need to skip all the logic from this interceptor, then you would need to perform such a check earlier and exit from this interceptor immediately, passing the control to the next interceptor in the chain. In my case, this is not what I want to achieve, so I'm going to remove this part of code, but keep in mind that it is possible. And now let's check if everything works. And I'm going to unenroll a certain user and after some time, you can see that everything works just fine and we see only the error message in the component template, but without the snack bar message in the bottom of the page. And everything thanks to the HTTP context that we successfully set up for this particular HTTP call, while all other requests in our application will trigger the snack bar notification in case of failure. For example, if we simulate the 404 error for the call fired by the HTTP resource, we will see the snack bar message below with the error message, which is expected. And by the way, HTTP context, it works the same way with the HTTP resource as well. In such a way, we will achieve the same error handling behavior also for this request. As you can see, HTTP context is a powerful feature that gives you a lot of flexibility in configuring HTTP requests and interceptors. And it becomes extremely useful for use cases when you have to tweak particular HTTP calls like we did in this video today, or if you want to keep a certain state between multiple interceptors because you can manipulate the HTTP context right from there. Also, HTTP context works really well with root scoped interceptors that I covered in one of my previous videos. This combination might be really powerful and if you didn't watch the video about root scoped interceptors yet, that's great time to do that. And if you are completely new to the Angular interceptors concept, I have a dedicated video that is a perfect starting point to learn this topic. Alright guys, if you find this video useful, please support my efforts by sharing this video with your colleagues and friends, hit like to this video and also leave your comments below. If you particularly like what I'm doing, you can support production of my next videos on Patreon or here in YouTube membership program. In return, you will unlock early access to my upcoming videos and also to exclusive content. Additionally, I offer a range of advanced Angular video courses that will help you to learn certain Angular topics in depth like Angular forms, unit testing and many others. You can also check and visit anytime our friendly Angular community on Discord. It is free and available for everyone. Otherwise, I wish you productive week ahead, guys. Stay safe and see you in the next video.